loud and clear. Might hear me on the radio. Hey guys, it's Eric here at Farpoint Farms and tonight I get to cross a bucket list item off the list. This is the realistic TRC 474. This was my dream radio when I was a kid growing up. The catalogs, the Radio Shack catalogs that came every year, well they always had this as their second highest, right? The highest being a sideband model. But this one was actually just out of reach, just out of reach. It would go on sale. Its normal price was $149, and it would go on sale for $79. And even though that was a humongous amount of money back in the day, there were times where it was just out of reach. Oddly enough, my first CB radio ended up not being this, and there's a good reason for it. It went on sale. I went to a Radio Shack, and this was back when Radio Shacks were everywhere, but also when Radio Shack employees knew everything. I mean, these guys knew it all, right? And so the guy sees me come in. I go right over to the shelf. They had about 12 radios sitting up there. God, those were the days. I'll tell you what. And there it was, and I'm looking at it, and I got my money in my pocket, and I'm ready to buy it. And the guy comes over and says, what kind of car are you putting it in? And I said, sir, I'm only 14 years old, so I don't have a car yet. And he said, then this is not the radio for you. And he went on to explain, that well, you're going to need an antenna, and it has to have a ground plane, so you'd need to buy the Shakespeare Big Stick. That was the, uh, the, the Radio Shack, or I think it was called the Archer Big Stick, but it was, you know, Shakespeare antenna. And there you need 50 feet of cabling at least, and then you need a power supply. And by the time I was done, you know, it's four or $500. So clearly it was completely out of my price range. So what he steered me towards was the TRC-217, a great handheld that I have to this day that still works, that I still take out every once in a while. And I've made a video on that if you want to dig through the pile. But as a result, I never ended up with this. When I turned 16, I sure wish I hadn't bought that TRC-217. I sure wish I had bought this because I didn't have anything for the car. And it would be some years later before I finally ended up with that radio right there, a Pace CB144. The rest of that is history. Let's get on to tonight's radio, the TRC474. This was Radio Shack's meat and potatoes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the camera closer in here so you can see all the buttons and knobs, and we'll go over all the features and functions, and then we'll fire this thing up, and we'll roll through the band and see what we can do. Let's do it. All right, here we are with it. I've got it plugged in. I've got it hooked to the SolarCon A99, and it is time to play with this thing. This first appeared in Radio Shack's catalog, and I remember it because I still have it, in 1987. And it was gone after the 1990 year, although if you go to the stores, you would see them on clearance at the stores well into 92, really. I think I saw one or two of these floating around when I was lusting after them after getting a driver's license. Now, the TRC-474 was the top-of-the-line Radio Shack radio at the time, other than their sideband model. So it was kind of the cream of the crop. And as you can see, it had all the bells and whistles. And let's go through those right now. First over here, we have our volume and on-off switch. Right here is our squelch control. This here is our RF gain switch. But this one here is kind of an unusual one. Let me turn the volume up and you'll see what I mean. Listen carefully. That is tone control, and that's kind of a rare feature on radios then and now. So you can change the pitch. If the static is too irritating to your ears, you can change the tone of both the signals you're receiving and the background static. So that's really cool. And then finally over here is our channel selector knob. It is, uh, you know, it's pretty, pretty hard clicks to get through it. Above that, the LED screen, uh, and thankfully on this one, all the LEDs work. So that's really cool that everything is as functional as it is. What's difficult to see here, and you'll see it a little bit better when I transmit, is there is a digital bar graph here, one through five. And then there is some lights here. We have this switch here with a little orange on the end there. That's our channel nine selector. So down is normal mode, we go up, and it highlights a little LED lights up that says channel 9 right there. Push it back down, we go back into normal mode. We have two others, AW1. 
I'm not sure what that is. I haven't looked up the manual online to figure out that one. But the last one here is modulation, so you can kind of see it flickering as you speak, which is a really cool feature as well. Next to the channel 9 uh, on-off switch there, we have off, uh, off and automatic noise limiter, so I'll leave that on for right now. And then lastly, we have CB, monitor, and PA. So you can put it in monitor mode and it pretty much just blanks things out. And if you go to PA, obviously it's a PA function. So it's a really cool radio all around. I will show some close-up pictures of the front, uh, the nice front, and this one's fairly clean. And here's one of the back with all the plugs. It does have a spot for an external speaker, as well as the power and the PA and the PL259 connector for the antenna. The sides, pretty much non-existent. And the bottom, it's a bottom firing speaker on this model. Right on. Well, let's go ahead and turn it up and let's see if we can hear anything. Skip was rolling a few hours ago, but it's getting kind of late in the evening. So I'm not sure if we're going to find something this late in the evening, but let's give it a shot. Traffic on 38, but it's probably sideband traffic, so I won't key down on it. But you did see for a second there the bar graph start to move up. Leave it to the Super Bowl to come through. So the Super Bowl is happening. And again, watch the, uh, watch the LED lights move around as people start speaking again. I was hoping to find some local traffic, but it may be too late. Somewhere on 15. Break channel. Break channel for a radio check. Go ahead, Elwood. This is Farpoint Farms. Looking for a radio check on this beautiful little realistic TRC-474 I've been playing with. Well, that's it. It works, in, uh, and, and it works pretty darn well. It transmits well, and it receives well. I was earlier, when I was before I cleaned it, it was really, really dusty and dirty when I first got my hands on it. But I could see, oh, by the way, I, I paid $15. People have been asking me to include prices of radios when I pick them up. I don't know why, but... $15 at a ham fest. That's what I paid for this. And uh, it came with the microphone that's in the bracket, you see, but no manual. Um, so here's the question I have for y'all. I was on the, uh, we're making a Volkswagen bus into a camper, like, you know, a classic Volkswagen bus. If you follow my other channel, you'll see the progress we're making on that. That is getting a Subaru engine installed in. It's going to be a very reliable bus, which is kind of like an oxymoron because no such thing existed, especially with the original engines. But with the Subaru engine, we're going to be doing some serious traveling next year. And I wanted to have a CB in it. Now, I was going to put um, something from President in it with AM and FM. But looking at the bus and looking how vintage it is, would you think that this would be a better fit having come out, you know, in 87, where that bus would only have been 14 years old at the time, and certainly those were all over the road back then, this would have been something that somebody might have gone out and bought to install on their bus for a trip like that. So do you think this would be a better choice than a more modern radio for installing on my Volkswagen bus camper project? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. I'd also love to hear your thoughts on this radio in general. Radio Shack, you know, there was a time when Radio Shack was kind of, you know, people thumbed their nose at it because, oh, it's Radio Shack, that stuff's junk. Time has proven that to be wrong. I love Radio Shack items. I have a DX394 shortwave receiver that I use every single night, and I have had some other great Radio Shack radios. Like I said, my first radio, the TRC217 handheld walkie-talkie, still working all these years later. 
I guess that'll do it for tonight, my friends. I'm Eric, and I hope you enjoyed this trip down memory lane with a really cool Radio Shack radio.